Welcome back to Hardware Unbox for the return of our monthly GPU pricing update video. Last month took a bit of a break due to all the graphics card launches just so we could wait and see where everything is settled, but that has meant we're in store for a bumper episode in February with lots to talk about. The first month of 2024 saw the release of four new graphics cards from NVIDIA, the GeForce RTX 4080 Super, RTX 4070 Ti Super, and the RTX 4070 Super, along with the AMD Radeon RX 7600 XT. These products are largely mid-cycle refreshes, taking existing silicon and tweaking the configuration and pricing to be more suited to the current graphics card market. As you will have seen from Steve's reviews, none of them really move the needle significantly, the biggest gain being the RTX 4070 Super in terms of performance and value. In many ways, these products represented what AMD and Nvidia should have launched at the start of the GeForce RTX 40 and Radeon RX 7000 series. As far as reception has gone, the card that has come the closest to selling out has been the RTX 4080 Super, though this is impacted by the lower supply of this GPU relative to others. Still, despite the almost irrelevant performance improvement compared to the RTX 4080, buyers have been generally happy with the new price tag of $1000 US, slashing $200 from the price of the RTX 4080, one of the more overpriced models in Nvidia's initial lineup. Other GPU launches have gone okay. The RTX 4070 Super and RTX 4070 Ti Super both drummed up some interest, but neither flew off shelves. We're talking more of a bump in sales metrics, a decent uplift considering a mid-generation release, but not a huge spike. The RX 7600 XT hasn't appeared to make a huge impact, with little fanfare and low excitement around that launch. It's been interesting to see the reception to these products, especially the RTX 4080 Super, which is currently difficult to find at its $1,000 MSRP, currently going for $1,050 on Newegg. What we've noticed from comments on our videos is lots of discussion about cards being overpriced, even for products we think offer good cost per frame and overall value. There seems to be lots of judgement calls being made about the perception of where a card should be. For example, all the talk of how an RTX 4070 should be no more than $500 US because that's the price tier for a 70 class GPU regardless of what performance it offers. This sort of mentality seems to be having a real impact on graphics card sales. The product offering price cuts or better perceived prices are selling relatively well like the $500 RX 7800 XT, last generation heavily discounted RX 6000 GPUs and now the 4080 Super. Of course there are many other factors that buyers consider but the actual price number appears to be an important part of that. I'm sure current cost of living concerns and inflation is playing a part in that. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on that in the comments. The launch of these four new graphics cards has, in some situations, had an impact on the pricing of graphics cards around those models. The RTX 4070 Ti, for example, is now available at a new low of $700 US, dropping by $50 compared to last month and $100 compared to its MSRP to make way for the 4070 Ti Super. This typically puts the 4070 Ti in a good, though not outstanding value position, given the Ti Super is now 14% more expensive while offering less than a 10% performance increase. The jump from 12 to 16 gigabytes of VRAM with the Super complicates that discussion of course, as having more VRAM is worth paying a premium for. Also at a new low price right now is the Radeon RX 7900 XT, which has fallen to $700 US as well. AMD have tried their best to keep 7900 XT pricing at or below the level of the 4070 Ti, so with the GeForce product dropping, so has the 7900 XT. But given these two GPUs offer similar levels of performance, and we believe AMD GPUs should be cheaper to account for feature and ray tracing differences, merely keeping up with the 4070 Ti isn't going to be sufficient to get our recommendation, even if it appears okay up against the Ti Super. With the 4070 Ti still in reasonable supply, the 7900 XT probably needs to hit an even lower historic low price. The RTX 4080 has seen little price movement and in some regions like the US, virtually no discount despite the introduction of the superior 4080 Super. However, supplies for this card are low. In other regions like Australia, the 4080 received discounts months ahead of the 4080 Super's introduction, creating a situation where the 4080 Super launched with no perceived discount because the 4080 was already discounted below MSRP. For example, the RTX 4080 had a local MSRP of 2220 AUD, but is currently available for 1700 AUD, while the 4080 Super is available at its 1870 Australian dollar MSRP.
The percentage difference in Australian MSRPs for both 4080 variants matches the difference in US MSRP, where the 4080 Super is $200 cheaper. It's just that the 4080 has been available at a near 25% discount in Australia. The Radeon RX 7900 XTX has found its way down to $920 US, now facing increased competition from the $1000 MSRP RTX 4080 Super, though a little less competition with the 4080 Super sitting at an inflated price. Ideally, the XTX should be priced below $900, and this actually isn't a historic low for this model. It's previously been down at $910 in November last year. So if you're interested in this model, I'd wait for further discounts. Then we also have the RTX 4070, which continues to sit a little below its new official MSRP of $550 US. Currently, you can pick one up for around $530, basically the same as last month. The 7800 XT is available for $490, just $10 below MSRP. This difference can be a little larger in other regions though, making the AMD GPU better value. It's 8% cheaper than the 4070 in the US, but at Mine Factory in Germany, it's 12% cheaper. The RTX 4090 is beginning on a path towards normal pricing after impending export restrictions saw AIBs and distributors rush to get 4090s into China, inflating the price in other regions. Now that those restrictions are in effect and Nvidia has produced the RTX 4090D for China, the 4090 has dropped at Newegg from $2,000 to $1,900, and within a few months we're expecting that price to get much closer to its $1,600 MSRP. Not much else has been happening across NVIDIA's 40 series lineup. The RTX 4060 Ti 16GB is currently $430, with prices sitting between $425 and $450 over the last four months. The 8GB model is at $375, failing to reach the historic low of $330 from the holiday period last year and offering a similar price to previous months. What's interesting about the 4060 Ti 8GB is we recently surveyed listeners to the Hardware Unbox podcast about the absolute maximum price they'd pay for a graphics card with 8GB of VRAM. From about 2,000 responses, 86% of people responded with a maximum price at or below $300 US, with 51% of respondents saying the maximum they'd pay was either $250 or $200 US. That's a problem for the 4060 Ti, which offers 8GB of VRAM at well above $300 US, let alone $250 or $200, and I think that's why interest in this model has been weak. The RTX 4060 also has a limited target market given its 8GB of VRAM and current price of $290, with the RTX 3060 12GB still being a relatively popular model that remains in stock as an alternative at a similar price. AMD are facing similar issues with the RX 7600, also competing with their own RX 6650 XT. Neither the 7600 nor 4060 have changed in price all that much over the last few months, and the same can be said for the RX 7700 XT, which sits at $430, $10 above its historic low. Meanwhile, Intel's current generation ARC products have kept relatively similar in price to previous months. The A770 16GB is still the cheapest graphics card with 16GB of VRAM at just $260, and the ARC A580 has fallen to a new low price of $165, though the A750 is back at $205 after spending a little bit of time at $190 US. If you know the games you are interested in playing run well on Intel's ARC products, these could be good options for mainstream buyers. There have been interesting developments for previous generation GPUs as well. GeForce 30 series stock for the most part is coming to an end more than a year after the introduction of the 40 series. The 3070 Ti and 3060 Ti are pretty much gone right now, joining the RTX 3058 GB that's now only available at a ludicrously inflated $320 price point. There is limited supply of the RTX 3070 left, though its price point of $425 is unattractive compared to just the 4060 Ti. 16 gigabyte, let alone other options, while the RTX 3060 12 gigabyte appears to be in the healthiest position in terms of amount of remaining models. Most of the 30 series models have not been especially competitive for a while now, but ideally Nvidia would want to sell through remaining 3060 stock to encourage users to move over to the RTX 4060 instead. Supply is also drying up for the RX 6000 series, at least for some models. The RX 6950 XT is no longer available as of January, meaning that there are no last generation models competing with newer generations at price points above $500 right now. 
given the RTX 40 and RX 7000 series are pretty competitive in that $500 to $800 range at the moment, this won't have a huge impact on consumers. I don't think buyers will have access to the RX 6800 XT or RX 6800 for much longer either, although pricing hasn't started to rise like we can see before end of life. There's just one 6800 available and sold by Newegg from XFX and only a handful of 6800 XT models. Those 6800 XTs at $500 don't make a ton of sense to purchase when the 7800 XT is just a little better at the same price, but the RX 6800 is a decent option at $400 and probably why it's more scarce. It offers about the same performance as the 7700 XT and 4GB more VRAM for $30 US less. Also gone, or at least very hard to find right now, is the RX 6700 XT, which for graphics card shoppers looking for something around $300 US has been the go-to option for several months now. The 6750 XT is still available, but not as good of a deal at $360. We've often suggested these models around $300 due to their great performance and 12GB of VRAM, but once they dry up, the alternative will be either the slower 7600 XT with 16GB of VRAM for $330, or the terrible 4060 Ti 8GB at $375. I think there's been a lot of frustration among GPU buyers that this sort of product, the 6700 XT, hasn't been adequately replaced in this latest generation as around $300 to $400 is a very typical amount buyers are willing to spend, yet the newer options are super underwhelming. Then we move to lower tiers and it appears as though the RX 6600 XT and 6650 XT are not going to be around for much longer with only one model of each available at Newegg and low stock in other parts of the world. A few months ago these were the go-to choices instead of the RX 7600 due to their similar performance but lower price, often going for just $220 US or thereabouts compared to $260 for the RX 7600. These days, prices have returned to more like $250, which is less impressive compared to AMD's newer model. The RX 6600 is still in good supply, which is good news for those after a graphics card around $200, as this is a good deal here. Pricing isn't anything special at $190, we've seen around that price for the past year, but with good availability, there doesn't seem much risk of it suddenly disappearing and leaving the $200 market high and dry. The used market, pretty uneventful right now, prices have largely stagnated as the overall graphics card market settles, and both Nvidia and AMD have basically complete lineups. You can find some good prices here, and it's worth exploring for those after a lower cost GPU, but always remember to check pricing for current generation models and match that up to what you're getting used. At times the discount for a used graphics card is not significant, other times you can find reasonable deals, so it pays to do some research. So it's been a big couple of months for the graphics card market, several new graphics cards launched and price movement for other models. Nothing drastic has changed, if you think GPUs are overpriced or not very exciting right now, none of this will change your mind, but hey, at least a few small things are happening. The introduction of Nvidia's Super Series has led to some price adjustments in the upper part of the market, which makes it a better time to buy a high-end GPU than in prior months. The 4070 Ti and 7900 XT have seen the largest price drops, the 4070 remains below its new $550 MSRP, and even the RTX 4090 is heading back to its MSRP. That's in addition to the value proposition of the new models, which depending on what you're after can be a worthwhile purchase, either offering more at the same price or the same performance for less. The mid and lower parts of the market haven't seen changes though as far as current generation GPUs are concerned, and this is where we see the most frustration among buyers. There's just really nothing exciting or worth buying if you have around $400 to spend, and around $300 you have both Nvidia and AMD struggling to compete against their own previous gen models. At least right now, neither brand is willing to drop pricing much in this segment, and none of these cards are at historic lows. It's a really dismal situation, and the best message you can send if you want things to change is to not buy one of those graphics cards. What will be really interesting to see over the next few months is the impact of supply finally drying up for last generation GPUs. Over the first two months of 2024, at least four older models have become unavailable, and even more are only available in limited quantities at unattractive higher prices than before. The fact it's taken over a year since the start of the latest generation for these older models to disappear confirms the oversupply issue was very significant, not helped by generally low interest in graphics cards. 
AMD and Nvidia will be welcoming this news because it finally means they won't be competing with themselves as often. For example, the RX 6800 was typically a better buy than the RX 7700 XT or RTX 4060 Ti 8GB at around $400, but supply of that model is now almost exhausted. Around $320, we were recommending the 6700 XT instead of newer GPUs. Now that card is unavailable. The only models that still appear in good supply from previous generations are the RTX 3060 12GB and RX 6600. How this affects consumers, though, remains to be seen. It's not ideal if one good previous generation card becomes unavailable and then gets replaced with a worse current generation card. It was always going to happen at some point, but it wouldn't be as much of an issue if we actually got a decent improvement in the mid to low end this generation. Anyway, that's the state of the market right now and something to keep an eye on in future months. As those older cards disappear, it'll be crucial to track where the current models are reduced to actually good historic low prices and to compare that to pricing of discontinued models to keep companies honest about actually providing a deal. We want to make sure that those new graphics cards are coming in at prices that are actually better than what you're able to buy from an older generation model in the past couple of months. And that's it for this GPU pricing update video. If you appreciate these videos, then please give the video a like, consider subscribing to Hardware Unboxed, and also we have our Patreon and Float Plan accounts. Links are in the description below if you want to support the channel directly. We've got lots of cool perks there, Discord community, monthly live streams, BTS content, all sorts of great stuff. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.